Hi, this is Paul again. Welcome to Cubic Wonder. Now I'd like to show you part six of Cubic Wonder. I'm only interested in working with fractals of order. I guess all this chaos theory stuff is way over my head. So I'm going to focus now on 3D fractals of order with the geometry of DNA. Okay, let's take a look at this helix. I spent about two weeks experimenting with Cubic Wonder and eventually I came up with this helix. So I'll show you now the helix from the very start and then we'll go to Cubic Wonder after. If you notice, I show 11 rings and I got the dual helix spinning around them rings. Now look at the dual helix. It's not exactly symmetrical. There's a reason for that. We'll zoom in and we'll check it out. Okay, take a look at the bottom ring. We have a little cyan sphere and we have a little red sphere. Okay, them two spheres are about 120 degrees apart. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line from the center of the bottom circle to the next one up. And then I'm going to put a little sphere in the center. Okay, now I'm going to make a line between them three spheres that line up. And look what we have. We've made our first rung of the dual helix. Now I'll make a copy and move the copy up to the next two rings. Now if I rotate that rung 60 degrees, she lines up perfectly with the next two spheres. So now we've just made rung 2. So we keep repeating this. The next one will be rung 3. The next one, rung 4. The next one, rung 5. Rung 6, Rung 7, Rung 8, Rung 9, and finally Rung 10. At least I think this is the last rung, but I'm going to make a check. Okay, what I'm going to do now is make a copy of this 10 rung ladder and then take it to the top and see if we can join the two together. Okay, it looks as if the helixes don't line up, but we're up one extra rung now. So we're going to be 60 degrees out at least. We'll zoom in a bit. Now look, if I turn this 60 degrees anti-clockwise on the top, the helix is they line up perfectly. They spot on. We'll add an extra rung in here as well. Okay, let's get back to Cubic Wonder. Let's see how it all fits in. Okay, I think the best place to start is the bottom of the stack. So we'll start with rung one. The blue rung that you are looking at runs like a diagonal. Actually, it is a diagonal. So I'll put a 3D cube outline around that diagonal. You're probably wondering how did I come up with such measurements that work out so perfect. That's because they came from Cubic Wonder, but I used their measurements from the very start of this video. Okay, so now let's put a string of Bucky Cubes and Plato Cubes, just like I showed in my last video, part 5 of Strings of Order. Okay, so now you can see that we have a perfect order here. We have a Bucky Cube on both ends, and one in the center. These are the key positions. Now let's bring rung two back and see what it looks like. Okay, this doesn't look like a diagonal. So we'll go to rung three, which now is 120 degrees, and that makes sense. It should be a diagonal. We'll give this diagonal another cube outline. Now things are starting to look good. Now we can replace that diagonal with another of them Bucky and Plato cube strings. Okay, now you can see there was a bit of method to my madness. Now we can go back to rung 2 and see exactly where it is. This took a little bit of time to figure out that the key blocks could line up. So this is how they lined up. So look at this. The Bucky Cubes line up perfectly on the ends and also in the center. But we also get the Plato Cubes lining up. Now this is in a different orientation. Maybe it's there for a purpose. Just think about it. Every other rung will either be a diagonal or a non-diagonal rung. 
I guess now it's plain to see that the dual helix and a ladder system can come out of a 3D fractal system. I show gaps between the blocks, but really it's all one massive system. The dual helix just wanders around in that system. Okay, so now that's all we have to do is repeat the process. So let's jump rung 4 and go to rung 5, which is a diagonal first. Okay, let's give rung 5 some blocks. Now we'll go back to rung 4 and give rung 4 some blocks. Now we'll do rung 7 diagonal blocks. And then we'll do rung 6 non-diagonal blocks. Now for rung 9 diagonal blocks. And now for rung 8 non-diagonal blocks. Okay, so finally we'll put rung 11 and then come back to 10. To decide which is the last rung, I find a little bit confusing. It will be nice if somebody figures all this out and makes a little illustration. Okay, now we see that the dual helix and everything is in a straight line. I've looked at a few demos of DNA helixes and they seem to twist and turn. So let's take a look at what I've come up with. First of all, we'll run a string of Bucky and Plato cubes along the diagonals of a string of cubes. As you see, we are going straight up and down. Now, if we want to change that axis, we can change to another diagonal. This angle is 109.471 degrees. So now we can do exactly the same coming from the opposite direction. And this angle is 109 degrees pico also. Now you can see there are another two angles. These are 70.529 degree angles. So let's focus in on these angles and run the helixes on them angles and see what happens. Now look at the dual helix. It joins together right on the bend. So there is definitely a no-go on this 70 degree bend. This is another interesting discovery. It acts just like a check valve. It stops the flow in the 70 degree direction. I'll give you a better view of the geometry for those that are interested. Okay, so now I'm going to put this little highway system into a bigger cube. I've set the diagonal sets in different colors. Let's take a look at the red ones first. Now you can see the helix can come down and it can take an 109 degree bend. There are three of these bends 120 degrees apart. And now if we go to the cyan, it's exactly the same except we're coming up this time. Now this is only an indication of the direction that it can turn. But if you look at the helix, the base of the helix turns every time you change direction. That the helix only makes a presentable bend in one direction. It acts just like a spring. So what I've done now is I've made another little animation. And I, what I've done, I've made a copy of the helix and the bottom half I've kept. And now I'm going to rotate the helix and show you exactly what's happened. You have to lift it up one cube for every 120 degrees. And you can see it lining up. So I think if it keeps repeating going with the flow, it's a perfect recipe for making more helixes. Before I leave this 109 degree bend stuff, I want to show you the bend that I made using cubic wonder blocks. Because the very center cube... I couldn't make a diagonal in that cube. So finally, I'm going to finish up by showing you another amazing discovery that I've made. The cubes are allowed to wander. If you watch when you start moving the blocks, the diagonals of the cubes, they always stay intact. But the non-diagonal cubes are given a little bit of leeway. But the cubes don't actually move. This is just a demo. The dual helix just wanders around the cubic wonder system. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for looking at the stuff that I've put on video.